Hello magical hands, welcome back to another Pinterest inspired tutorial. In this video, we are going to learn how to make this milkmaid dress and this is the result you expected to get from this very tutorial. This is also a beginner friendly tutorial, so without any further ado, let's get into this video proper. We are going to be using the basic bodies of a dress for this tutorial. So the first thing I'll be marking is the shoulder measurement of my client divided by 2 which gives me a 7 inches. I'll mark it on the top part of this pattern paper and at that point where I have the 7 inches, I'll come down for one by 1 inch for the shoulder slope. Now that is going to enable me to achieve this sloppy look that our shoulder has because our shoulder is not straight obviously. So I'll connect that to the other end of the pattern paper. Next thing we are going to do is to mark the armhole line. I'm going to divide the armhole measurement by 2 which gives me a 7.5 inches. Now make sure what I have on the shoulder part is what I have at the point where I mark the 7.5 inches. Now I'll connect that with the straight line and extend it to the right side. That line is going to enable us to get our armhole curve properly. So I'll just quickly indicate what the line stands for and indicate the shoulder line and then we we'll forge ahead to get in the bust point. Now for the bust point, if you are a beginner, just go ahead and place your tape from your shoulder to your bust point. For hers, I came down one inch from the armhole because she's pretty not busty, so I actually understood the matter we're doing here. But just follow the picture illustration, you get it all done. I marked on my shoulder to her under bust, uh, which is 11 inches, and then I'm going to mark to her half length, which is where the make made top part is going to stop. So at that point, I already have that all sorted out. The next thing I'll be marking is the chest line, which I went up by 2.5 inches. I already mentioned she is not busty. So if you're busty, you should be looking at 4 inches, 5 inches thereabouts. So I used 2.5 inches and that is it. Next thing I'm doing is to get the armhole curve. I divided the armhole measurement by 2, which is almost 4. And then I'm going to go in by half an inch. And I'm going to use that half an inch as a guide to get our curve perfectly. So now we have our armhole curve sitting at the spot it should be sitting. And the next thing we are about to do now is to start working on the main bodies itself after I have indicated what the chest line stands for. Now I'm going to be needing my up, her apex measurements, which is a 3.5 inches, which is your nipple to nipple measurement divided by 4. I will mark the apex measurement on all points from the chest line down to the half length. Now I will use my ruler to connect that with a straight line. I am using a red marker so it looks different so we understand what is going on. Now I'm going to indicate the yoke, which I will not be needing for this tutorial. Obviously you can see from the picture illustration. Now the next thing is to start marking my darts. On the half length, I took one inch apart from the apex line. On the under bust, I took one inch apart from the apex line. And on the box bust point, this is not really needed, but let's just go ahead. If you watch my corset tutorial, you will understand what's happening here. So now I'll go ahead with my green marker and shade that part. I will be cutting out that part, meaning it will no longer be needed. The next thing is to get that little V around the under bust area so from the bust i came down by one inch which is pretty okay for me i'll go ahead with my curve ruler as seen and connect it with my red marker so it looks a bit different so we understand the workings going on so we don't get confused now on that left side i marked what i had there which gave me 3.5 inches and on the right side i'll be adding up and half inch so if you watch my corset tutorial you will understand why i did that which is because the right side is supposed to be a bit bigger than the left side now, after doing that, I'll connect it straight up and I have something looking like a cup already. So, the next thing to do is to mark your round measurements and apply your sewing allowance, which I used one inch allowance. So, for the under boss, after applying my round measurements, I went ahead to replace whatever it is will be cutting out from that green box and I'm going to add one inch for sewing allowance. You can make your allowance two inches, you can make your allowance 1.5. Make sure to sew everything up while sewing your dress. But I used one inch for mine and this is what we have. Now we are done with the front piece, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. I'm going to cut what will be staying and trashing out what will not be staying. So we took out the dart and I indicated one and two for the front piece. So we don't have this all mixed up. Plus I have too many pattern papers around me so I have to indicate everything. Now I'm going about to the back piece, I'll take the side two of the front piece in order to get the full length. This is going to enable us and save us the cost of drafting a pattern from start. So now I marked all the points and I'm going to draw straight lines across them. After drawing the straight line across them, I'm going to go ahead and indicate what this point stands for. If you don't remember, make use of the front pattern paper to be sure. So we have the bust point, the under bust and the half length. Don't forget that the top part is the chest line. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring back the apex measurements which you use for the front piece. Now we are going to use it to get the back dart. 
now on the on on the half length which is also the waistline i'll go one inch apart from the apex line on the under bust i'll go half an inch apart from the apex line now I'll go ahead with my ruler and connect those lines together it's looking a bit sloppy i know right and then to the chest line i'm going to connect it to meet the apex line at that point there so that way i have my dart and the next thing i'll be doing is to start marking the round measurements so use the same process we use for the front piece apply your measurements whatever we are going to be trashing at in that box make sure to replace it measure it and replace it and then add your sewing allowance which i'm using one inch which you can use more than that if you so wish but make sure to sew it up while sewing your fabric now i'll connect the lines together and now that i have all my lines sorted out the next thing is to cut this piece out now my clients requested that she doesn't want a zipper she wants the back to be laced so which means the back has to be super small in order for the lace to fit in so now i'm going to reduce this i'm going to take out from the whole dart area out so i'll be making use of the second part of the back as the back of this dress because we are going to be lacing this up well if you're a beginner you will understand as we go further now i'll go over to my cup i'm going to slash and spread and that is the only way we're going to get the gathers at the cup area now i'm going to draw a straight line at the center of this pattern paper this fresh pattern paper i'm going to make sure that that line across this is going to help us get our work well so now i have what the width of this cup is and it's almost a 7.5 so i'll go ahead and divide it by four inches divide you can divide by six you can divide by three as so you wish i divide mine by four now whatever it gives me i'm going to mark on all points of this cup this is going to enable us slash this accurately so i marked it and yes this is what i have i'll go ahead with my ruler and draw straight lines across those points down to the end of the cup so make sure to do your same as i'm doing mine but you can go ahead and use three inches divide by four inches like i said so now i'm slashing them into bits in case you're a beginner and you're wondering what's going on you probably have not seen this slash and spread method anyway it's pretty kind of an interesting thing to do well just carry on just follow what you see in the video and you will understand so now i'm going to go ahead with my marker and trace this out Honestly, if i had a tape i wouldn't be tracing this out but i really couldn't find my tape and it's not time for me to just go buy a new tape yet so i just went ahead and drew the patterns on the new pattern paper so just draw it and make sure that the green line on the pattern is on the green line on the fresh pattern paper so make sure that you leave like two inches in between for me i left two inches if you want you can leave like four to five inches thereabouts so i went ahead and i kind of traced out everything making sure i had like extra two two inches in between all the lines now i'll go ahead and connect those lines together just forget about that whole apex line that space in between that that line forget about it it is not needed this is not like a corset cup this is like something that needs gather so we are ignoring that so now i have my cup ready it is looking long i understand but that is what it's supposed to look like so now we are going over to duplicate these all our patterns we're going to duplicate all of them on the fabric as well as on the lining so for the side fronts i'm going to be cutting it in two separate pieces for the cups i'll cut them in two separate pieces for the center front i'll cut them on if i'll cut it on a fold just in one piece i'll cut it on a fold so now that i have that i'll go ahead and cut on my lining as well so anything you do to your fabric make sure you do same to your lining because your lining is like the better half of your main fabric so i have everything all ready and now we're going to go over to work on the under corset which is like the corset belts which is what most people like to call so now i'm going to place them up as seen on my table if you're a beginner and you don't understand the magic this is what we are talking about you can use this picture illustration by the right side to get through so now i'm going to go ahead and sew the fabric separately and sew the lining separately so now that i have pinned it up and i will take this to my machine and sew it up that is what it is looking like now we'll go over to the cups i will notch the front so i don't get to mix this up because i think it's beginning to look much alike and i'm just wondering what's going on here so i don't want to mix this up so i went ahead to notch the front now what i'm going to do is to place the both cups i'm going to go ahead and place the lining on this making sure that the right face is touching the right face now i'll go and sew and then i'll flip it over just turn it and give it a good press just give it a clean ironing and we should have our two cups looking like this for now for now we're not done yet so now i'll take this over to my sewing machine and then i'll go ahead and sew the ends of this just give it a loose stitch just to secure it for now 
So now that I've done that, you can see how it is looking. Probably you're wondering what's going on. Chill, we are getting there. So at the top part, I went ahead and sew one inch. I almost forgot or half an inch. That's for that's going to enable me pass the elastic of this. So now I'm going to mark the elastic that I'll be needing to pass through the top part. I kind of didn't use an exact measurement. I just kind of placed it on it to see what would be enough. And I cut the elastic in two. So now I cut bias strip. I use green because there's green floral print on the fabric. And now I'm going to sew the elastic, one edge of the elastic to one edge of the bias that I've already sewn. So now this is what it is looking like. I made sure it is very secured. So the next thing I did here, I almost forgot, guys. I almost forgot. I was supposed to also turn this part of the cups i was supposed to turn like the center front of it but i kind of forgot so just follow what you are seeing me doing in the video so i'll fold this in as seen and i'll take this to my sewing machine to sew i will top stitch this time around it would have been better for me to just turn so that the work is not looking rough but regardless it's still not bad because i did quite a clean job and I expect you to do the same if you are following this tutorial line for line so i'm going to use my pin to secure that and i'm going to sew it up so I'll do whatever I do to the left side, make sure to do the right side. And this is a close view of what I was talking about. This is what I forgot to do. I did it to the left and to the right side. So now it's time for me to start fixing my elastic through the band. So now after using my pin to help me pass my elastic through the elastic channel we created at the top part, I'm not going to pull in everything, including the bias. No, where I'm just going to take in a bit of the bias and then... I'm going to use my scissors as you can see to kind of pull it in so it enters well so once i am done securing in the bias just a little bit like half an inch of the bias inside is already enough so i'll take this to my sewing machine to sew up again to make sure that i secure that part and this is what we have everything is looking very clean regardless that i almost made a mistake everything is looking clean and that is what you should do try as much as possible to be patient and try as much as possible to iron your work so we have a clean job at the end of the day so i was okay with the amount of elastic i had so i had to trash out the other end and i'm going to sew up the ends of the elastic that way i have it more secured so now i'm going to go ahead and the loose stitch i have at the bottom i'm going to go ahead and pull it together to give it some gathers at the lower side so this is just like a little calculation and all i just you can see everything is fitting perfectly just pull it together until you have something that goes around for the cup so this is what i have so this is where this cup is supposed to go into it's supposed to go into that space in order for us to have what we have in the tutorial or in the picture make sure you stop at the center point and then your second bust your second cup can be at the other side as well so guys let me use this opportunity to welcome all my subscribers if it's your first time here thank you for joining this family if you're a returning subscriber thank you for always coming back anyways my school have resumed and i know it's not nice for me to be announcing it here i know my tutorials are not going to be as consistent as usual but i'm going to try as much as possible to come up with other things make sure to watch my vlogs because they are pretty much interesting and yes you can also send us requests of any tutorial you want us to make on our instagram at jessica at akojess a k o underscore j e s s and yeah let's go back into this tutorial so after i have pinned this up i took my time to pin this i need you all to be patient with your work please take your time because there are so much curves in this area i'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew that so i have sewn everything up including the second cup and now it's time for me to use my lining to cover up the rough edges can you imagine the magic so now i'll take this over to my sewing machine and use the lining to cover up the rough edges of the work that way we are not seeing all the rough patches and all so the next thing i'll be doing is to notch very important for you to notch especially when you are working with things that are very curvy it is very important for you to notch that way your fabric relax well on the main side so that is what i am doing here and you can see it's looking more relaxed compared to the first time so now that i have that settled the next thing we are going over to is the back piece and yeah we are getting close to the end of this tutorial already make sure to click in for the part two make sure you're a subscriber that way you get notified when the part two is up so now i'm going to place the fabric the right face of the lining on the right face of the fabric on the back piece i'm going to place them on each other and i'm going to sew a seam from the top which is the chest line and then to the part where i will be putting the eyelet for the lacing 
So now I'm going to sew after sewing. I will notch as you have seen and then I will go ahead and flip this over to the right face. You can see how clean this looks. That is everything for the back piece. I'm honestly back piece are really less stressful. And then now we are going to go over to attach this to the front piece and take this to the weavers to weave. Pretty much this is what your meat made dress should be looking like this can go for a crop top if you attach your sleeves you switch we have not even gotten to the part of the sleeve so this is the end of this tutorial guys make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the part two, which is for the lower bodies and the sleeve so if you like this make sure you like make sure you comment and that being said see you in our next tutorial bye